Uh, greetings, Dr. Short. Thank you for joining me today on this one-on-one -on -one interview. Um, I represent Asgard Managed Services, and obviously you represent uh, Vernetics, the uh, public publicly traded company. So I appreciate your time. And the focus of the interview is to get a very streamlined understanding of the nexus of your zero trust networking technology and secure domain name system, and some of the technical features and components that, that you can explain, only you can really explain, and how they're useful in today's organizations. That sound good? That sounds good. Okay, great, we'll start off. So when you, when you co-created this awesome technology, what were the circumstances that, that you were under or operating under? Uh, this was back in the uh, late 90s. And uh, you may remember back then that uh, threats on the internet were just starting to really emerge. And there was a lot of issues with denial of service, a lot of issues with uh, DNS spoofing, uh, things like that. And so that's what was happening on the internet. And, and then we were working on national defense, uh, national security uh, programs. And what was happening on that side was an increased reliance on public bandwidth for operational uh, purposes. And, and so that they were running out of what was called uh, organic assets for their bandwidth. And so what they needed to do, they needed to be able to use public bandwidth. And there were a lot of threats on public bandwidth. And essentially, we needed solutions where you did not have to trust the bandwidth or the network that you're going across. It was really uh, way before they invented the name Zero Trust, but that's yeah. essentially what's the problem that we were trying to solve. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, so Zero Trust really wasn't monikered until around 2010, but you all were looking for a way to trust a limited resource, really. And uh, I mean, that's the beauty of technology, right? The, the, the morph morphosis of, uh, of you know, the genesis of something like this, solving a real problem. And then, yeah. Then the market. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, we, we, uh, the, the other thing that's happening was, was you couldn't predict ahead of time where you needed bandwidth and where your assets were going to be. And so that was also driving, uh, the, the department of defense, the, the, uh, Intel agencies to be able to dynamically use, uh, the public bandwidth public network in a, in a safe way. Uh, right. And so that led us to the research that we were doing to try to figure out how do you secure dynamically, emphasis on dynamically, uh, uh, connections across the internet where you can bring them up and tear them down on demand and not having to know ahead of time where your assets were gonna be. Mm -hmm. But if they had connection to the internet, you could get a safe, secure connection. Wow, that's, it. that's really interesting. In, in what organization were you working directly under when, when, when you did this or you co-created this? Well, I was working, uh, our group was working at SAIC. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a contract with a company called InQtel, uh, which basically was established by Congress to, to basically identify emerging technologies that would support the, the Intel agencies uh, in their operations. Mm. And, and so we came up with some concepts, uh, proposed them to InQtel, and, and that's how we got started on this, on this project, that's this awesome. technology. That's, that's awesome. So thank you. So uh, my next question is, what, what do you see as the most important use cases for the Vernetic Zero Trust networking technology and accompanying secure domain name system? Uh, I, I think, Probably the most important use cases uh, that, that we've run across is focuses on trying to secure legacy applications. Uh, one of the things that you're seeing now is security on the internet was an afterthought. Everybody understands that. And right. that's why it was such a mess back in the, in the 90s. Uh, and, and people have addressed it basically at the application level, layer. Everybody building an application has to secure their own application. Well, you have a lot of legacy applications out there, which are still useful and used a lot, but they're not very secure because security hasn't really been added to them. 
Right. Uh, because our technology secures at the device level, you can run any application and inherit our security because devices are being secured. The connections between devices are being secured. Right. And that's, that's one thing that we really like about the technology as well, the way that we're implementing it on the, on the, the appliances for offsite data management, cloud recovery, stuff like that, um, because it can't be easily manipulated like a VPN client could, right? That's when right. Signed to that machine. It, it's, it's a very, very strong um, attribute. Um, well, would you explain a little bit about how the authentication and on-demand functionality of the dynamic VPN actually work uh, for, from a kind of a technical perspective? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, it, it starts with a, what we call a secure domain name. And what we want, what we are trying to achieve, well, we were trying to bring high level security to the average user. And we recognize early on that to do that, you could not change the user's behavior. You had to be able to adapt to what the user was doing. Uh, so the aha we had about that was that every connection on the internet starts with a resolution of a domain name. Mm -hmm. So if you can intercept that resolution process, determine that you need a secure connection, create that secure connection and return the secure address, then you haven't changed the application behavior, you haven't changed the user's behavior. And that's why legacy applications can use this technology. They use a secure a domain name, it happens to be a secure domain name, we intercept it at the device level. And if it's a secure domain name, we use digital certificates to authenticate the remote side and, and your side, between each other and create an, a fully authenticated, fully encrypted uh, connection between the two the two points, two, two uh, computers. It's awesome. And, you know, we, we see a lot of benefits in the way that we're implementing this technology, but um, can, can you, do any come to mind, you know, that are working with some of these legacy applications? Obviously the, the user friction because you're not affecting the application usefulness, right? Which is one of the, the biggest hindrances to adoption um, within an organization, right? Is changing, like you mentioned earlier, changing the, the personnel behavior. That's we, right. We don't want to change, right? We want it that's to be right. easy and I want it to be like yesterday. Um, but how do you layer that in? And um, that's what one of the big things that have attracted us as Asgard to the technology and started to implement it in some very unique use cases. But do you see any additional uh, benefits that maybe um, people would like to hear about? Uh, well, may, maybe the best thing is, is to give a, an example or two. Okay. But let's say you want to secure your mail server. Mm -hmm. Okay. The way you set up your mail server is you basically give it a, a domain name that people can find. Uh, and, and then the, on the client side, you're basically specifying the domain name of the ma mail server and the ports it's supposed to go to. Okay, so with our technology, you put in a secure domain name in that client. And, and over on the server side, you're running a Vernetics gateway. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and so when anytime your client is checking email, it's resolving that secure domain name getting a VPN automatically and going to the mail server and checking mail. So all your connections to that mail server from your clients will be fully authenticated. That is nobody else is going to be able to access that mail server. Right. Fully authenticated and it's done transparently behind the scenes and you haven't changed your client and you haven't changed your mail server to achieve that security. Right. Which, which goes back to maybe not at the personnel level, but at the, the IT management level, pretty frictionless. Yes. To add That's in right. something and, of and the caliber, right? And, and, the, and the IT manager has full control over who has access because you're, all the access is through digital certificates that have been signed by the registrar, our registrar and our registry and and so you can either if it's if something happens that certificate it can be immediately revoked in mm -hmm. which case you have no access anymore 
Right. Uh, or if you if the IT person just wants to deny access to somebody, they take them off the access list for that for that gateway. It right. is that simple. Right. No, it is the the hierarchical controls of the application are we found to be very useful, and uh, um, I kind of want to reflect back to the uh, the the device level naming is was that something that was originally kind of sought out or or, or better how, how do you how did you kind of come up with some of these features like how how did these well, things we create? we. But way back in the late 90s, I mean, you may find this hard to believe, but <laughs> way back in the 90s, we, we foresaw that the mobile device was, mm. was coming. Right. And, and, and that we wanted to be able to secure any device, any other device, if you had access rights to, the, to each other. Right. Okay, and so the use and the use of digital certificates was pretty well established back then mm -hmm. uh, as a secure way of authentication. So we built uh, certificates into our devices themselves to actually authenticate mm -hmm. the device. Uh, we also have within that the, the certificate structure we have the user information too. So we're really authenticating user and device uh, at right. that level. Um, but it really went back to foreseeing that that devices were going to be everywhere, and and the right place to secure was at the device level. So you had to have your certificates at the at right. the device level. It's great foresight, and you know, like like we've spoken about in the past, you know, VPNs were in use. They weren't obviously what they are today, but now everyone using a VPN thinks that they're they're protected because they've got this client installed, and there is a secure connection, but there is some level of weakness at the device level because you're working from an application, right? That can be simply deleted if someone were to, to get that or maybe redirected. Yeah, right. You have that and you also have that that many of the VPNs on the market today are actually taking a VPN to their server and right. then beyond their server is going to whatever site you're trying to get it to. <laughs> uh, so it's you know, there's a certain level of, of anonymity they're providing mm -hmm. with those VPNs, but it's not fully encrypted uh, right. from your computer to the ultimate server you want to go to. Uh, That's a good point. Yeah. So perhaps you could expand a little bit on the the uh, security name routing system, the way that it routes traffic through the tunnel, through the secure domain name. Um, over the public internet, obviously, um, yep. what that system looks like in the background. I know you have a lot in the white paper <clears throat> that speaks to it, but again, this is for brevity's sake for um, our clients and partners to better understand, or people interested in technology to better understand what we're talking about here, the, the magnitude of the layers that have been incorporated here and the foresight that's been applied. Sure, sure. Um, just, just to kind of sketch out, uh, Briefly, how it works. Uh, it starts with a, a request in your device to resolve a domain name, a secure domain name. That that request is intercepted on the device. The request then is checked against your your basically against your peering list. Who are you willing to peer with? Right. And that's built into the certificate name. Okay. If you're willing to peer with that person. It sends a connection request up to something we call a connect server. And the connect server is basically used to allow you to find the other device somewhere. It's somewhere out there. If it's online, it's somewhere out on the internet, and it's registered its presence with the connect server. So when you go to the connect server, you say, I want to connect to this guy. Okay. The connect server finds where that guy is and sends the connect request over to the remote computer. The remote computer checks against its uh, peering uh, permissions, its policy, and if it's willing to peer, it will send back a reply that says, okay, I'm willing to connect. And in those messages is information about how to find each other without using the connect server. Right. Okay. So either they will use a relay 
or they will create what's called a direct UDP connection uh, mm -hmm. between the two. And so that's done during this, this handshaking messages. Uh, once, once you've established how to get to each other, then that's when the cryptographic uh, connection is made and there's a, an exchange of uh, symmetric keys between the two endpoints. So the connect server never sees your encryption keys. The, the only person who sees your encryption keys is, is the two computers that are connecting with each other. So no one in the middle sees what those keys are. Right. So once you have the connection, then you basically have an address on each side and automatically routes, each device automatically mount, routes by the address through that connection. Right. And strictly adhering to the definition of zero trust. That, right? well, that's correct. That's correct. Our, our thesis has always been that, well, there's been two, a couple of philosophies in our creation. One is, is you shouldn't have to trust anybody else on any network that you're going across, mm -hmm. whether it's your local network or where, you know, your, the public network, you should not have to trust that network, okay? Two, anybody on that network should be able to see your packets and not be able to see your data, mm. okay? And, and then the third one is that we, we have avoided the uh, the the issue with a lot of VPNs where you have to have a VPN manager. Mm -hmm. Okay, most VPNs systems have a VPN manager, and so it's kind of like a star uh, architecture where everybody goes into the manager to get their at their parameter information to create VPNs. Ours is completely distributed because we dynamically between the two sides. They negotiate the parameters, and right. there's no third party involved in negotiating those parameters. Yeah, and 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 that, and that's the thing that's really attracted us. One of the things that's really attracted us to this, and taking the use case for offsite data management backup as a service, DR as a service, because that connection creates a level of of trust that we have never been able to find anywhere else. And it's such a unique technological proposition that everyone is now talking about zero trust and there's mandates coming out for zero trust for federal agencies. And people are talking, they're trying to make it sound like their technology has some of these things. But the Vernetic Zero Trust Networking Technology and Secure Domain Name System that's been around for nearly two decades or thereabouts, right? Pieces of it yeah. um, have over overachieved and exceeded all of the definitions of zero trust in, in every facet of the service level that that you can do, facilitate, right? So for us, it's, it's an awesome thing. We're very happy to be working with you all. Um, the last question I have for you, and I, I appreciate it, your time and everything that you said, is, is there anything that you really foresee as, you know, one of the co-creators of something revolutionary. Is there anything you see in the future of zero trust that, uh, you know, you'd like to, you know, mention or warn people about? Uh, I think the threat's going to get worse. I mean, it's not going to get better. Right. That's for sure. Uh, and, and on our side, we will have to continue improving our technology. Uh, as, as the threats get worse, uh, the, the the interesting appeal of our technology is one is simplicity. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, pe when people understand our technology, it's like like a light bulb goes on. Yeah. You get it, you know. Oh, yeah. that is so elegant, and because it is elegant. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there's that. Uh, it, it, you know, you, you point out that no one else is doing this, uh, which is kind of a fascinating thing to me. It really is, yeah. Uh, no one's doing this at the network level. There are people who are doing parts of this technology at the application level. And, and, and 
but but there hasn't it seems like there hasn't been a a strong motivation from the big tech companies to do this cross platform uh, security uh, mm. they're more they're more focused on their own you know their own product lines so put it that way yeah. uh, and securing within their product lines but not securing across platforms uh, and, and I think ultimately uh, people are going to be demanding that, I think. Yeah. Well, I can tell you firsthand that our clients and our uh, potential clients that we're speaking with now, they're very interested in zero trust. They're telling us that there's a lot of noise, that companies are representing things that aren't necessarily, you know, fully true. Uh, they're kind of, uh, you know, um, you know, talking a lot more than what it really is. And when we come in, we tell them, hey, this can be used at the device level to you know, manage your backups, to layer into your, some of your current infrastructure. We're not trying to be everything to everybody. It makes a lot of sense to them. So yeah. I, I hope the intention of, of this interview, and I really appreciate your time, Dr. Short, was to simplify that, to hear one right from one of the co-creators' mouths, um, you know, some, some of the vision and technological components about the technology. Um, that we really see as a game changer. So I really appreciate you being here with us and uh, thank you for your time. Uh, you're welcome.